Welcome to another Airbrush Asylum video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to airbrush some real fire using my fire tool templates on a white aluminium composite panel and we're going to do it all using Createx Candy 2O paint plus some trident colors as well. So let's get into that right now. Okay, so here I have a set of the Candy 2Os. There's a few different colors in this. We're going to use a couple of the Candy colors as seen here. So we're going to use Blood Red and Tequila Yellow, as well as the High Performance Reducer and the Mixing Additive. We're also going to use some Trident colors being Red, Black, White a white mixed with yellow, and a peach flesh. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to use my new fire tool templates to help to create these flames. So I'm going to use them with a mix of freehand airbrushing as well. Okay, so you'll notice here I've got my aluminium composite panel and it's all been prepped. So just a light wet sand on this particular one. It was already white. And I'm starting off with some red Trident water-based airbrush paint. And all I'm doing at this stage is just roughing in where I want my flames to be. So because I'm working on a white panel, I'm using that red to, as I said, just to find out where I want to go with these flames. And then I'm going to work black around them. So it's going to appear as though the fire is burning the white paint off the panel. Okay, so you can see there that using that red, I've just roughed in the basic shape of my fire. So virtually my underpainting, and I'm now coming in and going back over the top of that just to make some of those areas a bit brighter. So still not using any candy at this stage. We're going to get to that later. I just wanted to do this with the solid red to start with, just to be a great foundation. Okay, so now that I've finished off with the red, I'm switching to Trident Black. And I'm just going to work in around the edges of that fire to create our burn marks. So with the red, I was using a HPCS Iwata Eclipse. Uh, now I've switched to my CMC Plus Micron. The Eclipse runs a 0.35mm needle whereas the Micron runs a 0.23mm needle, so it's a bit finer, and I've also got that MAC valve on the front of that airbrush there, so I can turn the pressure down if need be to do some finer details. Okay, so now that I've got uh, the black pretty much fogged in around all of those flames, I'm going to come in now and be a bit heavier and a bit more defined with that black, just to get that real nice contrast.
Okay, so now that I've finished with that black, you can see I've got some whitish sort of gaps and the red definitely isn't heavy enough. So I'm just coming back in with my Trident Red and I'm going back over the top of all those areas just to brighten up that red and get some full colour saturation going. Okay, so I'm happy with the amount of red now. I've got nice contrast, it's bright enough and I'm now switching to Peach Flesh and what I want to do now is start to create my first layer of fire. So even though I call these flames real flames, uh, they're not intended to be photorealistic flames. So they're not meant to look like completely real. These are more of a stylized uh, flame that I like to use on a lot of bike Harley jobs, um, motorcycle helmets, so a lot of automotive applications. Um, it's a great little technique to use. Uh, most people would know this technique from the person that virtually pioneered it, which is Mike Lavalli, a good friend of mine. So um, heaps of respect to him. Uh, obviously his style is amazing. So I'm just going for my version of that. So I do hope you enjoy it. Okay, so you'll notice that I'm using my templates here. So there's four different templates in this particular template set uh, with the specific curves that I like to use to create my style of real fire. So you'll notice that I tend to use one edge of the template first and kind of use that to sketch almost where I want to go, create my first shape and then I flick up from that. So you've got to kind of virtually imagine how the flames would be licking up across the surface of whatever it is that you're painting and kind of get that flow. That's the hardest thing to teach. So try not to use the template too much, all right? So then the flames can look way too masked. So you want a balance of having that sharp edge, sort of the gassy section of the flame, and then that freehand flick uh, coming off that just to give you that nice flow. And look, everyone has their own version of doing these. So this is just the way I like to do them. That's why I designed these particular templates because the, uh, the shapes are exactly the ones that I like using over and over again. So it makes it a lot easier if you are interested and you like my style of flames to follow if you um, utilize my fire tool template set as well. If you are interested in obtaining these particular templates to have a go of doing My Style of Fire, then by all means check out the links. Um, I'll put some links to my website for Australia-wide sales as well as Airshot Stencils. Uh, I'll put their link in for um, international sales. Just going back over some of these embers there that I utilized the template for, just softening those areas up. And I'm also brightening this section uh, towards the lower part of the bulk of the flame. If this is the first time to the channel, feel free to hit subscribe. Tap on that bell icon, that'll notify you every time I put out new content. I do hope that you're enjoying this video so far. If you think it'd be helpful for others, by all means, feel free to share it out to any community that you think would benefit from this particular video. All right, so we're gonna mix up our first candy. We're gonna to use tequila yellow mixed with blood red to create an orange candy. All right, so we're mixing these together at equal amounts and then we're gonna add the balancing clear into that as well as some reducer. So the balancing clear is the 40-30, which also came in this set. And the ratio that we used to make up this orange candy was 15 drops of tequila yellow, 15 drops of blood red, and 9 drops of the 40-30, and some reducer. So the basic rule of thumb for this particular candy 2-0 is, well this is what I found, is that for every 10 drops of candy you add 3 drops of the 40-30 and then um, I tend to add about say 5 to 6 drops of reducer to that as well. So 
If you want obviously more paint, just um, up all the ratios. And what I'm doing is I'm virtually spraying that candy straight over the uh, peach flesh first layer that we did earlier. So the peach flesh is uh, much like uh, what used to be done um, with the, the automotive candies when you use the molly orange. I'm not too worried about a bit of overspray going on the white. I'm actually happy with that because it's going to give us a bit of that sort of orangey glow burning off from the uh, white background. So just continue coating until you're happy with how bright the candy is. So just be careful not to coat it too much because it will go, very, it'll go darker and darker and darker. So. There is a point where you can oversaturate it, but overall the um, the candy flowed really nicely. I definitely found that putting reducer in worked for for my application and my style of painting. So you have to make up your own mind if that's something that you want to do. Um, I do highly recommend straining them. So I do that with all my automotive candies. You want them flowing really nicely. You don't want any spots or spitting coming out of the airbrush. So I find that by straining them just through a paper strainer, one of the automotive ones, um, works really well. Okay, so I let the candy dry for a little while and now I'm coming in with a blue tack rag. This is a clear coat tack rag by Gerson. And um, I'm just wiping down any of that sort of dry spray. And then what we need to do is we need to seal in that candy. So I'm using Transparent Base by Createx Wicked Colors. And what I'm doing is spraying over the entire um, orange section. So virtually just cover the panel. It's the easiest way to do it. The reason for this is these do act uh, like a normal candy would as a dye and uh, they will bleed through if you do not seal them within every single uh, candy coat. So every time you lay down a candy you want to then seal it off with that uh, Createx Wicked transparent base. So as you can see here I've sped up this uh, section now. So I'll show you certain areas that are um, in real time like this and then I'll speed up certain parts. Uh, you've also you've seen the first layer done in real time so we're virtually repeating that. The only difference is that every single layer, um, especially with the going from the first layer to the second layer, that second layer which I'm doing now, I do alter where the fire is going. So I still obviously fit it within the same areas, but I'm creating totally new uh, fire licks because I want to create that sense of depth of flame. So I want it to sit on top and then we're looking through the fire to see all the previous layers. So you don't want them all to be lined up exactly the same or just have one sort of section of fire. We want that multi-layer, so by changing each layer gives you that effect. In a sense you're creating um, your foreground and backgrounds. Okay, so now that I've finished that layer of peach flesh, we're now going to the tequila yellow candy. And we're doing 30 drops of the candy, 9 drops of the 4030 and 15 drops of the high performance reducer. You'll notice there that uh, that was the strainer that I was talking about, the paper strainer. So they're a mini version of the normal larger version that you would uh, use when filling paint into your spray gun. So just go to your local auto body shop, they should have them. So I'm just uh, applying that yellow candy over all of the uh, areas that we just completed using that uh, peach flesh. Again, just coating it as much as I feel it needs it until I'm happy with the intensity of the candy. You can see some of the yellow uh, 
the more transparent licks sitting over the darker black areas are going a little bit greeny. I'm not too worried about that right now. We'll come back in and uh, fix that up later. Uh, as you just saw, I sprayed some more transparent base over the top just to seal that in. And now I'm working uh, the black back in just to pop out some of these areas and get a bit more contrast. You can already start to see a bit of depth happening. Apologies for the extraction fan. I usually try and have that switched off, but um, surprisingly these candies, even though they can be cleaned out of your gun using um, just water or airbrush cleaner, they still have a fairly potent smell, so I would recommend you wear a respirator when spraying them. Okay, so I'm going to now use a bit of blood red candy, uh, same ratio, 30 drops of candy, 9 drops of the 40-30 and 15 drops of the high performance reducer. And again, straining that into my airbrush and I'm going to spray around uh, the edges of that fire. So where it meets the black, I'm just going to leave more of the uh, center sections in that brighter yellow. There's still more layers to come. I'm just starting to knock back some of those areas so that they blend nicer with the um, into the black sections. And again, we're going to seal off that candy with the transparent base. Now, one thing I haven't been showing you every single time is that uh, after every candy application, I am using that tack rag just to get off any of that dry spray, uh, overspray that you get from candy. So keep that in mind. I'm not showing it to you every time, um, but I am doing it. So if you want to follow along, make sure you do that as well. It'll just also help to keep the uh, artwork nice and clean. So now I'm using a yellow white mix. So I want a brighter layer now. And by doing uh, a brighter layer is obviously going to make the candy brighter as well because the candy is totally transparent. So it's going to sit on this brighter layer of um, fire and uh, you're going to get a lot more sort of uh, contrast happening, which is what we want. Plus we want that hotter section of the flame. So virtually repeating the same steps as before, I'm now starting to follow the flame a little bit closer. So I'm now uh, looking at each particular lick that I've done and I'm accentuating those areas. So uh, take your time with these steps now because you're getting sort of towards the uh, final parts of the artwork. So you want to be a little bit more accurate. So just really think about how you want your licks to appear and um, try not to overdo it. It's always very easy to, to kill off a lot of these areas by um, adding way too much. So don't go too crazy. Follow the similar steps as what you've done earlier, but um, just take a little bit more care, that's all. So any areas that I want to be a little bit brighter, I'm going back over them and essentially because this is an opaque paint, the more I coat it, the brighter it's going to get. 
can see I've also got some of those real wispy sort of lines in there so they're going to still show up underneath the candy which is cool so you're going to get that sort of um, sense of motion that's kind of why I, I like putting those in because it kind of catches your eye and, and um, gives you the impression that that flame is flickering up the panel so you can see closer to where the sharp edge is from the template I'm brightening some of those areas up as well just to get varied contrast and I'm keeping a lot of my brighter areas down in the lower section so the bulk of that fire whereas where it tapers off um, in amongst the embers that's not as bright generally the edge of the ember might be bright but um, it's nowhere near as bright as that lower section which is the body of the flame also adding in some dot highlights so just these little stray embers nice and bright so up close for those and also utilizing the ember sections within the template there so using that template to get my basic outline of it and then free handing off that so you can start to really see that layer now happening we're getting that sense of depth So just keep building and brightening off any areas that you think need to be a bit brighter and then we'll add the candy over the top once this layer is complete so here we go tequila yellow candy same mix as before so just follow those uh, ratios and spraying that over all of those areas that we've just completed with that yellow white mix so that yellow white mix is just white mixed with yellow that's all that is so a nice opaque brightish yellowy white if you want you could also use uh, white just straight but I prefer to put a bit of yellow in it just takes the edge off it a little bit and blends nicer with um, with the candies so just finishing off uh, and sealing in that yellow candy coat with the wicker transparent base. So now that that's dry, I'm just going to come back in with some black. Just to clean up a few little areas. And define a bit of that uh, burning detail and get some more contrast happening as well. Okay, and back to the yellow white mix again and we're going to uh, further detail the previous layer so using that template again just to get our nice sharp edges and feathering off freehand as well just to break it up a bit opaquing within this area a little bit more to get rid of that uh, sort of little bit of greenish tone that happened from applying the yellow over the top of a darker surface which was the black
So just brightening up some of the edges of the fire there and uh, tapering it off just with a bit of freehand airbrushing. Now we're going to use the tequila yellow again and we're going to start to add that onto this particular um, layer. Now you'll notice uh, one thing that I'm doing differently now is I'm not just going over the entire layer with the tequila yellow. I'm only hitting sort of the top and the uh, bottom edge and also some of the outer edges just to basically keep the center section of the fire brighter and uh, have the, the other areas blend back into the previous flames. So you can see I'm just gradually doing this very, very carefully. So take your time with this step. And now I'm coming in with some blood red candy. So you notice I haven't sealed it this time. So I've left the transparent base out at the moment because I want the red to just be uh, airbrushed in onto those areas and we're virtually turning some of that yellow into orange. So you're kind of mixing on top of the surface. And because the red is changing the yellow into orange, on the areas where the yellow went a little bit green, it's neutralizing that section. Okay, so now that we're happy with the yellow and the red that we've added, I'm now doing the transparent base again, just to seal in all of that candy. And we're gonna do another layer of the yellow white. So again, just brightening up these areas again, using our yellow white mix. Okay, and we're now hitting the artwork again with a bit more tequila yellow candy. Same as before, I'm not going right over the top of everything, so I'm only hitting the edges. You can see I'm leaving that center section to remain brighter so that you're getting that real sense of depth.
And now we're sealing off the completed artwork with some transparent base. And you can see the completed panel. So all the candy sealed in nicely. So I'm going to put some uh, clear over this. Uh, you could obviously two-pack clear it, acrylic clear it, whatever you like. I'm just going to use a 1K clear just for the purpose of the um, video. And you can really see how nice and bright that the flame is because of that use of the candy. So as I said, I'm going to use a 1K Glossy Clear by DNA Custom Paints. This is in an aerosol. I'm just going to tack rag the artwork once again and then apply two medium to wet coats of the clear. So usually I would uh, clear all of my projects with a two-pack clear. I outsource that and it's all done in a uh, spray booth, but for the purpose of this video, I thought the uh, 1K would at least just seal it in. Um, it worked really well, didn't get its full gloss, but um, I'm going to wet sand it once it's dry and then uh, give it another couple of coats just to bring that gloss up because um, I did notice that the candies acted very much like a urethane candy would and they did suck up a lot of the, uh, the these coats of clear. So as mentioned, you can definitely see here that there is a bit of a sheen to the panel now, but it's more of a satin finish rather than a full high gloss. So I'll let this totally cure and uh, give it a wet sand and then uh, coat it another couple of times um, with the um, aerosol and that should seal it in very nicely and give it that high gloss. So I do hope that you enjoyed checking out this video and until next time, go grab your airbrush, do some amazing artwork yourself, and we'll see you again very, very soon for another tutorial. Bye for now.